So good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I hope you're all staying warm um, on this chilly morning. Uh, my name is Sumner. I'm the Events and Program Specialist with BC Food and Beverage. And I'm so pleased to welcome Phil and Kenny here with us today from This Commerce Life. And I will let you guys take it away. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to I'm just going to share my screen if that's okay. So I get the deck up. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm Phil. That's Kenny. Um, we are, we're this commerce life. So we are a, we're a podcast um, made up of, of kind of two guys that are super fixated on retail and CPG and just how you get to market, how you sell things, how you do things. Um, and um, you, we're really happy to do this with you today. We think the world of Elisa and we, we just met Sumner, but we also think the world of Sumner because we've had about 10 minutes with her and she's awesome. Um, and so we're just kind of excited to share some SEO basics with you today. Um, we'll, we'll go through a deck, but um, probably the, the biggest things about this is this is designed to be fairly practical. We can go, if any of you have like super kind of SEO-ish questions, we can certainly answer those along the way. But we're also like, we, we really believe in keeping SEO as practical as possible. Um, so, so this is going to be a very practically focused uh, session. So if you have questions, um, throw them in the meeting chat. And then we get, if they're quick answers, we'll, we'll certainly answer them on the spot. And then if there are things that we need to push till the end, because uh, they take a little bit more time, we can do that as well. Um, all right. So um, so without further ado, we'll just we'll we'll get into a little bit more. This is us. Um, you can see us. We kind of look like the guys on the screen. Um, and uh, and so we're we're a podcast that's passionate about Canadian retail. So um, if you haven't checked us out and you're interested in brands and founders and what they're doing in the Canadian space, definitely go to thiscommercelife.com or wherever you get your podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We're kind of like all over the place. Um, and we've been at this like five years so 200 and we dropped our 273rd episode last night um so so that's out there and then uh you know if you if you are um you know if you're looking to learn more about cpg or retail have a listen and then if you're looking to reach cpg people retailers brands uh come talk to us kenny did i miss anything nope you keep going my friends you just keep okay. going along okay Okay, so um, so I'm presenting this in Canva. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So this session is being recorded, and I think Sumner has um, very nicely offered to send out I think the it's, deck everybody's as well. Gonna get after, it. Yeah, as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so I'm gonna we're gonna keep going. I'm sharing this in Canva. If anyone has trouble viewing, please sound off. Or if if we're not sounding clear, any of those sort of things, just make sure you kind of wave and and um, flag us and we'll, we'll make sure we kind of fix whatever the issue is. Um, so the first question we usually get when we talk SEO is why? Why are two podcasters talking about SEO? Um, Kenny and I are, are we're podcasters uh, now and we, we want to be forever, we think. Um, but but before this, we, we were retail, marketing, sales folks. And we but we really love stories. It's literally what we do now. Um, but the, the thing about SEO is if you can't be found and no one knows you're telling the story, then who's hearing this story, which is really the crux of SEO, right? Is you, you need whatever your story is. And we keep finding new and amazing stories. If you don't, if you don't know how to spread it properly, if you don't know how to get people who are looking for stories to find you, your story won't be heard, which is why SEO is such a critical component. Okay, so so it's literally what we do, and then we we really we really do care. We we think there are amazing stories out there. Um, you know, um, folks in this association, you've got probably some of the coolest stories that we've heard so far from the folks that we've interviewed on the podcast. Um, and uh, and the trick is, you know, like you you've got to know 
what words to use, when to use them, how to use them in order to get found. Otherwise, what's an amazing story if nobody know, nobody can hear it, right? Okay, so SEO basics that we're going to do today. We are going to cover what SEO is, what you really need to know about SEO, key components that you should incorporate in your everyday life. Um, and then we talk about anything. So bring your questions. We're pretty practically focused. Um, Kenny is my, Kenny is the hall monitor. So if I get, cause I can geek out on SEO pretty hard. And so there are moments where Kenny, you'll see Kenny kind of come up and go, stop it. <laughs> Ordinary language, please. Um, you know, um, so, and if you so, have questions to want yes. it in ordinary ask, cause I do this with Phil all the time, cause he'll go yep. down these paths and I have to literally stop him because half the time, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. So it's, I have to, I tell him like, dumb it down so that I get it. Like, tell me what you're trying to tell me. Right. And I think what you'll find throughout the presentation is we're very light on theory. Yeah. It's all practical application and you'll see how we do it in actually one of our businesses so that you'll get an appreciation that it's not it's not just talking about doing SEO and getting all excited. It's actually putting it to real life yeah. practice. Yeah. And you'll see yeah. the results when you actually take the time to really try to get your story out there. Like Phil said, great to have a book in a library, but if nobody can find it, nobody's going to read it. Yeah. We, we want to be read. Yeah. Okay. So what SEO is. So SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's the process of making improvements on and off um, your website in order to gain more exo exposure in search engine results. Um, you know, when we check, when Kenny and I checked last night, um, Google has a 90% market share around the world um, on search. Um, so if you are looking for something, if you're looking for a solution, you're looking for an idea or, um, or an answer to an idea or an answer to a question, you're most likely putting in www.google.com and then searching. So you might do the other 10% are broken up into Bing and Yahoo. And I think DuckDuckGo is in there somewhere, um, but 90% is Google. Um, you know, so it's really, you know, SEO is the practice, is, uh, is the practice of increasing the quantity and quality of traffic to your website through organic search engine results. So organic meaning, if you do this and you use words properly and you you dial into what your business is supposed to is trying to say, you will get search results without having to spend a dime on things like Google <laughs> ads. You've probably all seen Google dialing up there. Hey, you, you guys should spend more money on ads. You should get in here and do Google ads. Before you do Google ads, you really should look at your SEO and make sure that you're optimized properly. Your agencies might tell you this too. So if you have agencies working for you, everybody seems to go yeah. right to the money. Yeah. And yeah. Phil and I will both tell you, and you'll see again, some results sooner or later. It's really don't start there. Yeah. You start on, on the free and you start with your self understanding, your words, your story. All right. So <clears throat> why is it important? Um, so kind of a cool wheel, lots of stuff going on here, right? There's everything from like keyword research to links building to site map optimization software. This is usually when brands go, you know, this what? is usually just, where I quit. <laughs> so I'm I just going to go sell some crap, right? Like I'm going to sell some crap, you know, like forget, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all this. Yeah. So what we usually say here is all of this is critical but almost none of it is important, okay? So as entrepreneurs, as founders, you you know this, right? As there are lots of things in the business that are critical, there are only a handful of things that are really important to what you do. So we've actually circled the things that are most important. So one is keyword research and the other one is content, okay? Those are the two things that if you come out of this session today, these are the two things that you must, must, must dial into. These are the things you must get a handle on, you must do. If you do those, the three things that benefit right away, website optimization, your ranking in search, and your social networks will all benefit from keyword research and content. If you do those right, the other things will come. So site links, site, site map optimization, software development, these things, they are always going to be around. You're always going to want to improve them. 
um, web design, right? Like who has ever built a web uh, a website that they love? Like everyone's always like, I got to build a new website, a new website, right? But the truth is, is what you really want to do is you need to do keyword research and you need to do good content tied to the keyword research. That helps you get most of the way there. Can I, I miss anything? Nope. Simple, simple, no. guys. Like seriously, everything. this is where people will come in and usually where most of us not Phil because he doesn't get scared where I will get to the point where I'd walk <clears throat> and say I don't know what the hell you want me to do and really all we want you to do by the end of this the whole presentation is just really understand that your keyword research and how you build and write content is critical that will make all of this other stuff happen but if you don't do those two the rest a, a beautiful web page that nobody can find I mean, you got a nice web page, but if I can't find you, I can't find you. For the record, I get scared too. Most of these things on this you site. You sound scared though. I, I'm usually <laughs> the one that's scared. The only one that actually really scares me is software development because half the that. time I got to read everything three times before I actually understand what they're talking yeah, about. And that know. makes me like, it makes me crazy. Um, so anyway, but otherwise everything on here, like we can... If you want to come back to it, we can come and talk about all of this stuff later because all of this stuff gets me pretty excited. Um, but honestly, keyword research and content is is where it's at. You get those. The other three things come, and those are the things you need to kind of get found. Okay, so um, relevance and authority. What You'll hear this term a lot. You'll hear SERP a lot. Um, SEO people love to throw SERP around. Um, SERP stands for search engine results page. Essentially, it is how, what page of rankings do you show up for? Um, and so, you know, when, when you are testing to see if you can get found, this is what people are doing, right? People are going, like for us, it's like, hey, we want to be able to find a Canadian podcast on retail or a CPG um, retail podcast or a Canadian business podcast. And so, you know, we work pretty hard to try and make sure we rank for those things. Um, you know, like I, I put in a little video for you here, but, you know, if you kind of put in like, um, you put in search results, you, you put something in, it doesn't actually matter, but you hit search. And so that first page of rankings is where you want to show up. That's the most important thing, right? Is, um, and so when you are um, doing SEO, that's what matters. So when you move up in SERP, so when you move up your search engine results page, um, that is when you know you're doing the right things and people are starting to find you. Um, and so that really is the most essential part of all of this is, is like if you are not getting found, then again, right, it's it's a problem, right? Like now you got to work harder at everything else you do because you've got to overcome nobody knowing who you are, okay? So SEO is about searching, is about people searching for solutions to problems, right? So it means that you are competing with lots of other businesses, right, um, to get found. Um, and that means that your words and your messaging needs to be clear and consistent. Um, at this point, it's this is usually when we run into some of these questions, but uh, most people at this point go, well, I already do this. I do this on social media. Um, and so it's a really, it's a really important, important differentiation to help you with SEO is that um, Google, Google is where people go to look for problems or answers to problems. And social media is where they look for testimony that the answer they found actually works. Um, so they're kind of like peas in a pod, but um, it's- One definitely probably... comes before the other though. Correct, correct, correct. Like, yeah. So what I, if you look at it, nine out of 10 of us, if we have something to look for today, the perfect gift or whatever, your first thing, First three things are probably in this order. You're going to try Google, you're going to try Amazon, or you're probably going to try YouTube. Those are the three big search engines. That's where the world resides in search. Very few, very few will go search on the social mediums. They'll only go to the social medium search once they have found it in the other mediums. 
right on the search engines in essence is that fair phil that's sort of yeah 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 what yeah, it yeah. is like so i always tell people that's great you got yeah. two thousand followers on facebook and instagram that's important and that's really good and you should be proud of that but i don't search instagram i don't search instagram typically things will either find me because the algorithms will work because i look at different yeah. things and the ads will come up but i search on the search engines amazon google youtube Okay. Yourself. So, yeah. So, so really important, right? Is the, it is a differentiation, the work you do on social media, SEO is the builder that allows people to find you and then learn about your followers and how they interact with your product. Right. So uh, one is discovery. The other one is testimonial, if you want to think of it that way. So they work hand in hand. Um, but it is important that you get your search stuff, right? Because it, um, what well, helps them find yeah. the referral yeah. and testimonial side of the world. Yeah. And, and Google is um, the most important, like, so Google is such a big part, you know, users click Google's first results. So when you start searching, we all know it takes kind of like three to five searches to find what you want. When you find it, whatever Google delivers as the first result, once you get to kind of like your fifth question, 39% um, of the time, people click that very first link or the first page of links, right? And so like it is a very reputable um, way or I don't know if reputable, but it, it, it is- a It's just the way we do it. How, yeah, consumers will start to search for things, okay? So really important. So, um, so cool. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Because now you've explained all sorts of things and I probably feel some pressure because- Maybe I haven't spent any time on SEO or keywords, and now I feel like I'm a little sunk. Um, and the truth is, no, you're not, okay? Um, what you do need to do, though, is to kind of set yourself some ground rules and then think about your content a little bit different. Um, and so what you what you really need to know is the more consistent you are and the way you say things, the better your SEO will be. And this is like, this is the normalization of what we would call keywords, right? So keywords are the words that are really important for people to help them find you. Um, you know, so you're always thinking about this, this part, this first few ones are hard for founders because you're so entrenched in your business. You're, you're always thinking about your business. You have sophisticated words for the way you say things. But what you really want to do is, you know, create content for the user first. So you really need to kind of like take a step back from your deep, deep knowledge of who you are and think about what is a newbie or my core consumer? What are the first things that they will want to search for before they know they're my consumer? Um, and then create content based on that, um, right? Clearly and succinctly to describe the content. Um, and then you're going to want to use those critical words that people will search for um, and make sure that you um, include them and repeat them everywhere. Um, one of the biggest mistakes at this point is for people to go, yeah, yeah, I know how to say it. I'm going to find a different way to say it now. And we actually say that is in SEO, you don't want to say things different. You need to say the same thing over and over and over again. Um, one, it teaches Google, um, the Google spiders that kind of do the work on SEO, um, you know, is, is that, um, you know, they're starting to, you know, the, like people are always looking for the same thing all the time. Um, and then, so you've got to be able to repeat the same thing. So Google understands what you stand for. And then people also understand what you stand for. Um, so the, the, the question is, is, um, ABC is starting, uh, technology. I've seen this article about, um, TikTok, um, starting to bypass, um, you know, so TikTok is an emerging thing. Um, yeah, so so TikTok's an emerging thing. Hold that thought. Um, Kenny's right. We can talk about Just, it at the end. At the we end. Can have a, I, we'll have a dialogue. But there's definitely, they still work hand in hand. It might be more, um, honestly, from a, a pro standpoint, I think we're just wondering whether 
they come before or after Google. So I don't think it replaces Google. I think it's more I don't about, think anything's going to replace the correct. search. But okay, so we started talking as well. So at the end of the yeah. day, okay. I think, again, it is a social media platform. Do you use it to search or have you searched and now go to the platform to learn more, engage more? Do I like it? Does it resonate with me? Right. But it's still trying to find that. Again, if you do what you think of in your own world, do you go to those engines and type in things and search on those in those places? And I would say for the most part, people don't. They will bump into things. Algorithms will spit things out and show you similar things that you've liked prior. But in terms of an actual, I need to do something. I need a service. I need a product. That search is nine times out of 10 Google in our world. Um, Amazon's going to rank extremely high. And so will YouTube. That's sort of the reality of today. Not to say that it can't change in the future, 100%. But just think of this right now really as how do I find you? How do I search for you? right? It's not once I'm on the medium, how do you bump into me or how do I bump into you? It's actually, how do I actually find you? I, Sorry, we can pick up this up at the end, guys. I mean, it's yeah. a good question and I'm glad you brought it up. I, I think that the other part, Kenny, I would round out to that and then we, we can definitely pick it up because TikTok's not going away. No. It's not something that's getting not, bigger. you know, yeah, it's getting bigger. I, I think the other thing is you've got to think about return on investment, right? Is if you, <clears throat> so SEO, classic SEO. So keywords, great content. If you follow the things on even this page alone, it nets you a consistency in which consumers can find you on your website. They can find you on SEO search pages. Um, you know, if you hire a marketing contractor, they come in and follow your words and be able to build things that matter. Um, on TikTok, the, there's still a question about return on investment. You know, um, everyone says, hey, just be authentic and shoot something on TikTok. But we all know it takes forever, right? Like, Man, what does that mean? You know, TikTok takes a long time and then you've got to test for breadth, right? Like, how quickly are you getting to consumers? So, um, so all of that, we can we can definitely talk about some more. Um, the last things on this page. So um, avoid auto-generated content. So there are, uh, you know, if you use a website builder, if you, um, if you are using if you're copying pasting things um google the google spiders the algorithms that do the work and and kind of like track who you are they don't like those they they will find those kind of copy paste things and you don't get you don't, you don't get credit for them so you won't rank for that content you'll actually be helping whoever you copied it from so make sure you're writing your own content um and then when you're using um when you're using images make sure that you are still including text for critical images. So if you have a product, for example, that you want people to find, it's okay to put a product shot in there. You still need to put in what we would call alternative text or alt text behind it so that um, search engines can find that stuff a little bit easier, right? So these are kind of the things that you need to know in order to get going. Okay, no. Um, Sorry. Yes. And, and so kind of like the, those are the things that you kind of need to know. Okay. Um, so things you need to do. Okay. So we had the circles up uh, before, right? So circles are things that you need to do. Um, keyword strategy. So keywords are words that you use to describe the business that a consumer would use to search for you. Um, these are also the same words that Google will associate with you. We'll show you a practical um, view of, of what this looks like in a sec, because um, we, we are kind of big on practical. Um, but keywords, so anytime you hear keyword, um, keywords are, are, are that. They're words that describe your business. Now, the one thing I'll tell you about keywords is, if you make a keyword list, but you don't use it anywhere, not helpful, okay? Because lots of people do that. Lots of people make lists, but then they don't, know what to do with them. Um, and so I, I don't know how many businesses I've jumped into where um, folks will go, yeah, yeah, I have a keyword list. And I go, okay. And then I'll look at the keyword list and I'll look at the website and go, you didn't use any of the keywords on the website. So are these the right words or the wrong words? Like what? Or what do you plan on using the words? Yeah. 
Well, if so, they're the right words, and then you have yeah. to use them, right? If they're not yeah. the right words, then you probably did the right thing, yeah. but then you yeah. don't know what your keywords are. So it's again back to really understanding that part of it. Yeah, and we'll, so again, we'll show you what this looks like in a sec. But there's a live, there's a live this? sample yeah. coming, you guys. Like we actually, so we'll show you how we actually do this. Um, the other one, so create great content, um, consistent with the website, and then consistent with the keywords. So this is, this is about making sure that a consumer who doesn't know who you are um, starts to learn who you are, right? Is, is they look the same, they feel the same. I must be on the same page. I must be in the same brand. I must be talking to the same people. One of the biggest like flaws, right, is you create a website and then you talk about it different um, or you think you've figured out a nicer way to say things and you say it different. But when they land on the website, they don't know if you're the same person or not because you explained it different. Or you wrote an ad that doesn't sound the same as what's on your website. It turns into what we call an abandon rate. So people show up at the store, the e-store, and go, I clicked I on an ad that place. was super fancy. They had great words on it, but then when I came here, it didn't match at all. I'm leaving. I guess I got the wrong place, right? Um, so this means that you, you're spending money um, on clicks that don't turn into something for you. Okay. So, um, and then, so these two things, so great content in particular turns into um, things that you will hear SEO people talk about. So backlink strategy, um, and then what we would call local signals or um, referrals, right? Referral sites. And so backlink strategy is, is if you write good content. So if you write good content and people like the content, they share it. We know this, right? When they share it, Google will say, hey, Kenny wrote something cool. Phil liked it. Phil shared it. So Kenny gets what we call a backlink, right? And then let's say Andy reads what Kenny read, you know, wrote, and he liked it, and he shared it. Well, that's another backlink. So all of a sudden now, Kenny starts to get a reputation of being someone who writes great content. Just and that's Google, what we would not call. the real world. Correct. No, Kenny, you I'm put out kidding. good content all the time. I'm kidding, Phil. Um, but um, hey, Lisa. Um, <laughs> um, so, so it's important that you get backlink strategy right, but you don't need to worry about that as as founders. What you need to worry about is writing great content because when you write great content, people know and they'll share it, and that gets you backlinks. So that means more people see you based on what you say. Um, local signals, websites, social media, all of this stuff. This is when it comes in because um, they find you, they discover how great the product is, then they want to go out and they want to find out who else has tried the product and then what other people think about it, right? And so when you do that, all of your backlink stuff starts to really come together because um, Kenny wrote an article, he likes this stuff, you know, Andy and Courtney and Andrew and, and Roderick, they all see it and they go, we love this stuff. Um, and so then um, as soon as that starts to happen, um, when Tara or Allison or Sierra jump in and they find Kenny's solution, they start looking around. They go, oh, I see it. I see Andrew and Andy and all these folks. They're talking about Kenny's product. So that's kind of how, um, that's kind of how SEO strategy works, okay? All of that comes from the two things that we said to focus on, keywords and content. You get those right. Um, so a backlink is like, yeah, so a backlink is like a, it's a reshare. So let's say, um, Kenny writes a blog post on this commerce life and Allison, you see it and you go, this is a cool article and you share that. So whether you share that on, um, you share that on WhatsApp, you share it on Instagram, um, you know, you share it on Facebook, you share it, or you repost it to your website. Cause you're like, this is a cool article. Right. So we actually do this a lot. So we will say, um, you know, we'll say, hey, you know what? We, we just did a podcast with um, Elisa, for example. Right. And then a few weeks later, we'll go, you know what? We got a lot of questions about Elisa. They heard the interview. They really loved it. We thought we would reshare something else that somebody else has done on Elisa to give you a little more context on who Elisa is. So when we do that, the original publication gets a backlink from us, right? So that's an attribution that says, Google says, hey, 
you guys are pretty reputable because somebody else went and grabbed your link and shared it with somebody else. So this is kind of like, if, if you take away all the SEO stuff is, this is kind of like going, Kenny is this really reputable guy. I'm not saying he is, I'm not saying he isn't. I'm just saying that Kenny's a pretty reputable guy. And he said that you should do this, right? And so Allison, if you then go and you meet uh, Mark, right? And you go, hey, Mark, I was talking to Kenny. And you know what Kenny said? Kenny said that if you do this, this is what happens. That is a real life backlink, right? Because you leaned on Kenny's reputation because you know who Kenny is and Kenny's a reputable guy. So when you share it, Mark now goes, I don't know who Kenny is, but Allison says that he's pretty reputable. So when Mark meets Kenny for the first time, he goes, I know who you are. Yeah, I know who you are because Allison told me about you. So I know who you are already. That's a backlink, right? That's actually how SEO works just online. So hopefully that makes sense. We can talk about that some more if if um, you- Good you content, kind of, sort of, yeah. good content will typically be shared. The more sharing of your good content, um, the more Google says, you know what? We really need to, or you really need to pay attention to this. So when you are searching for whatever it is, you, that person or those those articles or content become relevant and move up the Google chart. So you're not leaving page one and trying to, because everybody knows what Google's like these days. You type something in, okay, and that didn't work. You type again. It was like Phil said, the fourth, fifth time is typically when you're going to stop. So you really have to make sure that whatever you've written or whatever you're finding or searching, whoever you're searching for, hopefully is written well enough that it does start to rank by then. Otherwise, it's really, it, we are, no one's going to find you. It's back to sort of that. Backlinks help that because Google loves when people share good content because Google's saying it's relevant. It needs yeah. to be found when someone searches for that. It's really critical. Otherwise, what's the point of Google, right? And then the point is there is the more you get shared, the higher you rank in reputation, which means the higher your SEO results right. land on the page. Okay. Um, all right. So let's keep going here. Uh, One thirty, we, we, we will get done. So a real life example. So um, the disclaimer is Kenny and I both work on this business. It's called Old Growth Beverages. It's a relatively new tea that, that Kenny and I are both working on. And so when we started doing this, we, we started to sit down and look at our own stuff, right? And, and working on means we actually own this. So, you know, that it, it, so yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. billing mistakes built into this. Yeah. And then us trying to clean up yeah. our and content. And there's no, there's no propaganda here. You don't need to go buy it. You don't have to buy it. You, well, you could if you want to. None of that stuff. That's this fine. is really, this is to show you we use the same stuff that we do to help our own business, okay? So here's what we did is, so the opening paragraphs of the website is we went through this and went, oh gosh, like, you know, the first thing that you do as an owner is you go, gosh, I'm really excited. I've got to put down the emotion and the why of why I should do the business and here's why you should believe in it. But then what you've got to do is then step back and go, okay, wait, wait. So that's a lot of emotion for me, but what are the things that people are actually going to search for when they are looking for tea, microground tea, instant tea, whatever kind of tea you're into, what are they looking for? So we made a list of 12 keywords that we must have all the time in the business. Anytime we're writing, anytime we're sharing social media, a combination of these 12 keywords must be here because we're telling Google, hey, Google, we want to be known for these 12 words. These are not the exhaustive lists, but sorry, my Google actually responded to me, um, my my speaker in the background. Um, but um, so, so we're telling um, Google, this is what we would like for um, us to be known for is at least these 12 words. Um, when you're in business longer, you're going to have more words that you're known for, but start with 10 to 12, 10 to 20. Okay. And then what we did is we then went through our paragraphs and we rewrote them all. So all of the words on the right, this lives on the website. So if you go to oldgrowthbeverages.com, you'll see it, but anything in red is a keyword. And so it's a bit tedious. I'll tell you right now is but you've got to be able to do this. You've got to do this work. Is anytime you write a sentence, you you look at it and go, 
Okay. Did I include a keyword? No, I should probably include a keyword because Google will search all of this text and go, what are they trying to say? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, do you want to be known for blah, 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 blah? No. You want to be known for healthy, organic, instant microground tea. Those are all keywords that are on my keyword list. So what we had there before was emotional and artsy and fancy, but it didn't help us at all in the search engine results because the search engine had no idea what we were trying to say. It was just like, cool, you're saying stuff, right? And so repetition matters. The amount of words in here matters. And so you can see we've got quite a few of the keywords in here. And almost every paragraph you go through and you scrub every paragraph to include keywords. Um, and when you do that, what starts to happen is um, as, as you do this and then the Google spiders come through and they re-index your page, they realize, hey, they keep saying the same thing. It keeps saying microground tea. I think they want to be known for microground tea. They want to be healthy, organic, instant microground tea. Got it, right? And then they start to rank. Um, that's how it works. Okay, so um, this is the first kind of thing is, is honestly like what's on this page is your working example for how you should be doing all of your stuff. Um, so everything from your social media stuff to your paragraphs on your web page, um, anything that you're putting out, you wanna, you wanna make sure that you've got your, your 10 to 20 keywords, you're zeroed in on those and that you're using those words over and over and over again. Don't sub them for fancy things. I'm a marketer. So the first thing I'll do is I'll go, that's pretty vanilla. I could make that super fancy, right? And you've got to almost resist that and go, no, no, super fancy needs to include the keywords. Otherwise it's not useful, okay? Um, okay, Kenny, did I miss anything? Nope. Get too excited? Nope, Get a little excited. Go. Here's the uh, to go. Okay, um, the other parts here. So when you start using the keywords, um, this is what happens, right? Is you start to get clarity on the website. So the website, so I'll tell you right now is, so when you do this, when we did this on OGB, we call um, old growth brands OGB because it's too long to say otherwise. Um, Kenny, um, there's a tool I use to measure SEO. And Kenny was like, check it, check it today. Check it, check it. And every day he would go, what did it Actually, do? I said what it, did it do? four or five times you know? a day because I was yeah, yeah. And I said, do something. But... So calm down a second. You, you've got to, You've got to let the engine work, right? Like, so Google indexes probably something like 3 million sites a day, okay? That's the algorithm, right? And so it takes some time to come back to you. There are ways to get to that um, a little bit faster. So I can show you some of those hacks if you guys are interested in that. But um, the big thing here is do the work and then you will start to see it change, okay? Um, once you start setting your keywords, what you'll see is from a habit forming, it starts to change what you do. And then it starts to help you with things that are really mind-numbingly awful. Like Google ads is probably one of the worst things, right? Is you kind of go, I'll just write an ad. And then Google says, no, you, you've got to learn all these weird words that only Google says, right? Like you know, how do you do instant links? Do, do you want to, do you want to use, do you want to use site maps? Do you want to use site links? And you know, you're like, I just want to write a classified ad so people find my crap, right? Like, but what you realize is if I have the keywords that I know already, writing ads becomes easier. I don't have to rethink things because I already know how to say them. I've said them 18 times on the website. So your Google ads starts to come as a simpler process. And what's amazing is it starts to sound exactly like your website. So when people click on it and they go to your website, there's not a moment where they go, wait, I clicked on an ad, but I'm, this isn't what I wanted, right? Because you're using all the same words again. And then when you start translating that into things like content, you are now using all the same words in your content. So when you put up a blog post, you should make sure your keywords are in your content because Google will also look at that on your website and go, hey, they have a blog post with all the same keywords that they use normally or some of the keywords. So that counts to the words, their reputation, right? So I'm going to use that to help them rank better in SEO because they are consistent in the way they say things. Okay. So that's kind of how this works. Um, honestly, those are the two things, keywords and content. You do that and you keep consistent in what you do. 
um, you will this start goes, to... This is so Phil. This also yeah. applies because Phil just talked about website yeah. and, and blog. <clears throat> All your social. Yeah. So when you're now posting on Instagram or Snapchat or uh, TikTok or Facebook, Snapchat's dead, I guess. Whatever you're posting on, same thing. Keep your words, your message similar. So even on TikTok, which could was typically mostly uh, verbal and video, same thing. So if we go on TikTok, we talk about highly dissolvable instant teas that are really healthy for you, made with organic products. We do chide, we do London Fog. Like we say the same things. And you got to remember, like some of our stuff isn't necessarily searchable even today because we're in a little bit of a white space, which made it even more interesting for Phil and I. It's not like we're not going to use tea a lot because tea is searched. It's a highly, you know, we're trying to find our own identity while still using big words that everybody's searching for. But you're trying to also pick spots where you can become. So hopefully within the next X amount of months, when you type in micro ground tea, because hopefully that'll be a word everybody uses, we will, lack of a better, sort of own that little space. So when it is typed in and you're searching for micro ground tea, because you know it's the hottest thing on the planet, in theory, we come up. If you don't do the writing and you don't keep repeating it, you will never be found unless I happen to bump into you which is where the social media typically happens. It's typically mm -hmm. a bump in. It is not, um, I typed in the search. I just want to make sure you got that, that filled because the social part mm -hmm. is the same thing. Like what you important. post on Instagram or yeah. LinkedIn or Facebook, same words, same words. Everybody wants yeah. to know that every time they yeah. see it, I know who these people are because they're consistent. They always say the same story, maybe different way here and there, but the words are always the same. Um, so, so the other thing is, uh, because, you know, as founders, if you're hiring out to do work, having consistent wording helps contractors understand who you are. So if you have, particularly if you're hiring a marketer or social media person, the first thing I would hand them is your keywords. Yeah. That would be the very, very first thing. Yeah. If you're hiring a blog writer, a technical writer, any of those things, your keywords should go everywhere with you. Like, cause that should be the first thing. As soon as you send them that, um, a, a technical writer will go, oh, I understand. So let yeah, me go yeah. do my work now and I'll use your keywords as the framework for how I research. Um, and then that'll help you one, cut down on confusion. Cause how many of you have gotten to that place where you go, this is not what I asked for at all. Like, how did you get to these articles or how did you get to this topic? Like, this is a total miss. Like now we're wasting time. Keywords help you eliminate that. It helps you guide them to the right place. And if they don't ask for them, if you're already talking to agency, yeah, et cetera, yeah. then I would really reevaluate. <laughs> because honestly, if they're not doing you a service by helping you get to where you need to be, yeah. right? Otherwise, it's just, you know, if you're just going to be spending money just for the sake of spending money, which really nobody wants to do right now. Okay. So oh. uh, last bits here. So... Um, there are ways to measure this. You've seen ads for things like SEM Rush um, or Ahrefs. Um, you, um, the truth is, you don't you don't really need these where you are right now. Um, but if you ever wanted to, they, there are definitely places you can go. Um, what what I'm just showing you are some measurements to kind of um, what happens with SEO is you start to measure these things. So we know there are 21 domains, so 21 different websites who have said these guys are cool. But no, they haven't said these guys are cool. No, they, they just don't. said, this is an interesting website to go That's to. What they we would said. like them to assume that we're cool, um, but they're just pointing at the website to say, this website contains interesting information that are relevant to our viewers. So that's 21 more websites that um, could be viewing our things. Um, and then individual backlinks is these are links to things that we have posted. And so they haven't said the website is a great place for a reference, but this particular thing, this article, this episode, whatever it is, is really cool. This content so, is cool. Yeah. And so what you want to see out of this is for a backlink is there are now 152 different opportunities for other people to see what you are writing, what you're creating in terms of content from the 21 referring domains is 
you now have the opportunity to tap into their entire set of eyeballs. Um, you know, so if a site gets 5,000 visitors a month, now you're talking about 21 times 5,000 you know, um, that could possibly see your content, right? So all of these things stack up to a reputation that allows your SEO ranking to go up. Um, and then and then Google actually tracks the number of organic keywords that you're known for. Um, so everyone starts at zero. Um, it's a sad, sad place. We all, like when Kenny and I started, I was like- So oh, maybe Phil, that's what you can bad. explain too. Like yeah. we've had, we had a web page up and running yeah. probably for four or five, maybe six months, yeah. right? And then when a uh, poor Phil, when I dragged Phil into <laughs> another part of my world, I don't know, poor bastard. He's always, I don't know how, I don't know why he sticks with me, but anyway, I dragged him into this mess and we just started tinkering. So these numbers were literally all zeros a couple of weeks ago within, you know, a week of just rethinking, rewriting talking to each other, say, what are the words that we want? How are people going to find us? And then how do we get um, the young people working with us when they're doing the socials using all these keywords? This is all like within days of actually just doing a little work. Didn't pay anybody. We didn't run any ads. This was all just really organic writing, just thinking and trying to make a cohesive story right which is really all if you really want to just take anything out of all the seo be consistent with your words and your messaging in everything you do and you've got odds of being found ideally don't pick the most obscure words in the planet either like you know you got to have some yep. words that think how people would search like if someone wanted to find you and you wanted to go in or you know you do sometimes when i just ask my mom and dad i mean my mom and dad are you know in their 80s they're tech capable but they're not computer wizards but i ask them mom try to find me like this is what we're doing this week i'm trying to do the coffee or whatever i'm doing and i just let her run amok because i like to see how she thinks what would she search for do mm -hmm. they match what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. right because otherwise you do you get bogged into your own world right phil vance problem you think we had is we're so entrenched in what we were doing and phil came in and goes you guys that's great but i mean outside of the two of you who who, who thinks this way like who's gonna find this? I felt right. bad. it hurt a lot. I felt actually. bad. I had to renovate, but I felt bad too. Like I, I felt really. I didn't feel very good. <laughs> no, it was fine. It took me a all couple right, of days. Right. Listen, we, we've got like 10, 12 minutes left, so I I want to get to the last page. We don't have to cover all these, but just remember, right? So you hear SERP, you don't need to be scared anymore. SERP is search engine results page. So your whole mission when you're doing SEO is to rank higher. So you if you rank. don't rank on number one. Google page number one, you're trying to get to number one or as close to number one as you can possibly get. Things that help you keep on track. So these are questions that you should be asking yourself anytime you're thinking about SEO, you're talking about SEO, or you're just thinking about um, things that you're writing. Um, are people finding useful information when they visit your page? Um, so forget the paid portion, just organic. So are you writing cool articles? Is the product profiles you're putting out educational? Um, are search engines able to find the right information? So um, are they are they pulling your pages? Um, and then make sure that your directory listings are consistent and accurate. So things that we actually haven't touched, but things like if you um, if you do Google My Business or um, Yahoo My Business or Yelp, um, make sure those directories are, if you're going to use them, make sure they stay up to date because that helps you get found. Um, and then see what other people are saying about you online. Um, probably one of the most humbling things for marketers is when you send, I have a, a group of um, buddies that I love so much and they're idiots, but when I send them stuff, usually what I get back is like a heart attack, right? Because one will go, wait, I, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Are you trying to sell me something? Is this really educational? Because they come from different walks of life, but I love it, right? Like it's a heart attack. And then it allows me to see what I don't see because I'm so far into whatever I'm I'm doing that I'm like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Like everyone's going to understand this. Yeah, no problem, right? And then my four idiots will go, are you, I don't, should I drop my car off? Are you going to do an oil change? And you're like, oil change where did that come from i'm talking about tea like oh my god right um so so you know and then make sure that your links so if you take down web pages 
things like that. Make sure that you're not sharing outdated web pages, things like that. Right. Um, but this is kind of like make sure it's consistent with your story too, right? Yeah, make sure right. you actually do the research. Make sure this web page hasn't go on, hasn't gone into, yeah. you know, very obscure places that you don't want to be tied to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, that is kind of that's the bread and butter of it. Um, that is it for us. We uh, we wanted to make sure we left a couple of minutes for questions, um, and then we really like keywords, content, keywords and content. Everything else, it can wait. All of it's important. None of it's critical. Keywords right. and content, you get those right. Everything starts to move. Most of your battle will get done. Like people yeah. will just remember all you're trying to do the simplest way. Cause I took me forever to understand Phil when you, cause you, he gets it more than I do was really, you just want people to find you. Yeah. That's really the whole trick to SEO. How do they find you? And how easy are you going to make it for them to find you? Hopefully that helped. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, and then if you guys have questions. Or some or however you want to do this or. Yeah, if anyone has questions at all, please feel free to <clears throat> unmute yourself or type into the chat. Um, I know Mark, he had talked about the TikTok. Mm. I don't know if you guys want to touch on that again at all. So TikTok is like, so. What we talked about earlier is the thing with TikTok that nobody's clear on yet is whether for young people it is truly a discovery mechanism or whether it's still, you know, like where it, it fits with Google because you when you see things on TikTok, you still need to go back to Google to investigate. So is that the primary trigger is that it causes you to discover and then go away to find an answer? Or is it like a Pinterest where it's more like an idea generator? So that's probably the part that we're not clear about yet um, because there's just so, there's so many people on TikTok. Um, and then I think the other distraction is because short video is so attractive that people spend a lot of time on it. Um, and so I think it's just trying to figure out what, what is it that people are doing, but um yeah so i i think that's where it sits but it it definitely it definitely ranks as something that we're gonna we're gonna keep looking for um bill had a question do posts on linkedin and instagram also help with google search uh so no actually on both on both counts so linkedin keeps its own um linkedin is very much a social network like instagram um so they are their own social ecosystems so if you put hashtags into Instagram, there are, um, you know, there, there, there are ways to search, obviously, hashtags in Instagram, and you can search the same in LinkedIn, but they don't cross over. So I used to write articles in LinkedIn, and then I got so upset when I realized nobody can see them unless you're in LinkedIn, which is maddening. Um, but yeah, um, so that's kind of... Um, yeah, so... Hannah, your your question about recommendations, finding good keywords. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> when you're looking, you can use Google Trends. Google Trends is a really good kind of technique to use. Um, what I would probably do is find yourself some adjacent markets for super niche. Um, so if, um, like for us, um, T is this like highly, highly, highly competitive market um that's kind of like got all sorts of red flags because we'll never be able to beat like a tetley or anybody yep. else in terms of advertising but then when we look at microground t it's literally it's white space like when we're i put niche. Wait, what you're asking t, for you talk super like, niche that's what we're in yeah we're, there's we're, no we're in super niche yeah so what we started to do is we went microground t is what we're known for but if i look at instant like any instant drink now i've i'm side by side with something where there are consumers who understand instant, right? So whether that's instant, like an instant mixed drink, um, like an electrolyte or whatever, or instant coffee. And then in parts of Asia, instant tea is actually a thing, right? So then we started to kind of, that's how we chipped away at it to try and figure out what words we wanted to use. But when we write, we don't, we don't try to make our tea like Nescafe. 
or like that. So don't, so don't think of it that way. What we try to do is we, when we write our articles or we write our blogs, because Phil and I do the writing, is we try to incorporate those keywords so that if you are searching instant drinks, I don't know what you're searching for. Maybe it was a, a, an electrolyte. Maybe it was a mm -hmm. coffee. Maybe mm -hmm. it was an iced tea. I don't know what the hell you're searching for. But because we're starting to use those types of words and we're writing about it and we're writing article on article, Google starts to look and think, okay, these guys are talking about this portion and they're talking about it consistently and it's spotted everywhere they are. You do start to come up under instant beverages or whatever the search might be, right? Mm -hmm. But it's sort of back to that. Again, it's a good question because that's what I threw at him. You know, four or five months in, nobody's finding us. I and mean, I thought we were writing pretty well. I mean, you know, we're relatively intelligent, but apparently not so much. Where Phil had to come in and basically say, "Listen, buddy, you're you're fancy. talking all over the place. Like, yeah, you're, it's too fancy. You're trying to make this into this wonderful story, but it, it, get to the get to the crux of what you're trying to get people to understand." Um, okay, let's see help. here. So, Roderick, um, in terms of benchmark SEOs, yeah, I would use. Uh, a really common uh, technique is just to use your competition, uh, even if they are somebody super large. Like, so for us, when we start looking at um, someone who's not the same, but similar, like a David's T, their numbers that like they dwarf us, you know, like we're just so small compared to them. But what you start to do is you realize like, how many people are actually searching for it. And then and then you start to set your own metrics, right? For like, how many words do I want to be known for? Like, I can't be known for, I think David's T is known for like 2000 keywords. And you go, I would like 10. <laughs> That's what I would like. I would like to be known for the 10 to 12 right. we have on the list. When we're known for those, then we'll add more, right? So you can definitely find, I would find, um, a competitor, no matter how big. So you kind of like start to scratch off things that you want to be known for that you can compete against them for and things that they're known for that you couldn't care less about. Um, so that's probably a good way to go. Um, I heard that adding a list of keywords as a caption to Instagram reels or TikToks would help. It helps. So um, whenever you add hashtags, um, I think these are almost the same um, Darius and Monica's comments. Anytime you add hashtags, it does help searchability, um, but only within those kind of um, worlds, right? So you know what does though, Phil? Does it Instagram. does it actually just provide consistency though? So yep. if I'm hashtagging micro ground beverages, yep. micro ground tea, instant tea, and yep. then if you find me on Instagram, you haven't found me on search because you weren't looking for it. You bumped into it because your friend liked it or whatever. Is at least at that point, if you're taking those words and going to the web page, because now you want to learn more about OGB, yeah, is the consistency of the keywords as key, those, pardon me, hashtags as keywords within our world. It just validates, does it not? Like it validates what, what we're trying to say. There's that consistency where someone says, yes, these guys talk it here. Like they walk the walk, talk the talk, et cetera. Like that's the, the trick, right? I have to ask him, you guys, sometimes, because sometimes I'm not too sure where the hell he's going. So I'm trying to make sure I understand it. Okay, I think- Is that it? Questions. Yeah. Is that true though? Is that how you do it? That's yeah. what you would do? That's, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Just want to make sure. I'd like to make sure I actually understand things. Um, thank you, guys. I think we're right at two o'clock, right? Yeah. Yep. Your time. Pete Terrell spills in Toronto. Away. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's two o'clock in yeah, Toronto. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock for us here. We're not at two o'clock. Nobody panic. It's 11 o'clock. Everyone's like, two o'clock? What the? Oh my God. Like, you said I that twice. I thought, okay, really? <laughs> and sorry, sorry, I was late coming on. I had another meeting, but I wanted to thank both of you as well. As you know, I'm a big super fan. So, so everybody else is aware we're going to um, put you guys on the spot. We're going to have Phil and Kenny um, more involved in the association and doing these types of things. I think there's huge value to it. Um, hopefully everyone agrees and had a great, I mean, it's just really like practical and great down to earth advice. And I think, especially when you're looking at small business, um, we have to be lean and practical. So I think Phil and Kenny are really great resources. Way, so appreciate that. Thank Thanks, you. Lisa. Yeah. So you guys do know, like we do live in the space, like we own small yeah. businesses. We, you know, we're, we're our, our fingers and hands have been in CPG retail brands for, well, for me, it's over 40 years and him, it's getting pretty close. He's not as young as he thinks he is. <laughs> Both things for a long time. 
I just want to say thanks, guys. And I, I thought that, you know, that what you're t asking for us to do around consistent messaging over and over and all the different platforms, I thought you actually did that in your presentation as a good example. Oh, thank you. And the outcome for me is like, wow, I think I'm clear on the few things that they're trying to say. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. That'll make Kenny very happy. Exactly. Because, as you know, it's his, life, already. it's his life mission to know that he's, you know. I have to know I have to understand something. I feel so <laughs> lost otherwise. Awesome. That's well, why we like so each much. other so much, Kenny. <laughs> we appreciate uh, you guys doing this, Phil and Kenny. That was a really great session. And Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning. And we hope you got a lot of great information out of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we look forward to, to working more with you guys as well. Likewise. Awesome. We're excited. Likewise. That was exciting. That was good. Yeah. And if people want to find us, we're on LinkedIn. We're all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah. Or just go through uh, Summer yeah. and Elisa. Yeah, like, yeah. We're not yeah. hard to Don't find. Don't be afraid to ask. Like we, yeah. we're kind of dummies like that. We answer all sorts of things just because. Um, and so if anything out of this, even you start tweaking your own stuff and you got questions, like shoot them yes, at us. We'll, shoot them at us. We'll do what we can to help. So shoot them at Phil, actually. Don't, don't shoot them at <laughs> Because I'll have to ask Phil anyway. So shoot them at Phil. And then Phil and I will talk, so I'll participate. But shoot them at Phil. Noted. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, Thank guys. you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thanks, guys. Bye.